Hello there, this is Dimitrios Christou and I'm back with another Blender video tutorial. Now this video tutorial will be an answer about building one of my objects that you can find in a scene over at graphicsdaily.blogspot.com Now before anyone starts complaining or putting thumbs down on the video, I'm going to just build the object here and you can take it from the object on to build the final scene and the scene is pretty simple actually in the object is actually pretty simple too so let's begin i'll hit shift a and add mass i'm going to add a torus moving down here at the bottom left corner for the torus options i'll bring the major segments down let's set it down from 48 to 24 and what I'll also do is bring the minor segments down from 12 to 4. And what I want here is to have a simple object so that I can uh, later work with. I like beginning with a simple shape and then adding modifiers to modify the look of it. I'll also bring the minor radius down from 0 0.25 to 0 0.15. Okay, looking good. And this is our torus. What I'll do now is hit shift A and add empty and plain axis. I'll also move to the empty options and increase the size for the plain axis so I can easily select them and locate them. I'll increase it from, from 1 up to 3. Now the modeling portion of our scene is actually ready we're actually done. What we have to do is add some modifiers to our object. I'm right mouse button clicking the torus to select it and then move over to the object modifiers. I'm going to click add modifier and I'll add, let's add the subdivision surface modifier. And I'm adding a subdivision surface modifier because I want to have more geometry on my objects here so I can work with the following modifiers. I'll also set the shading to smooth and I think we're good to go. Now second modifier I'm going to use will be an array. The array won't use a relative offset so I am unchecking this one and it will use an object offset to distribute the cloned objects. And as you can imagine I'll select the empty as an object that the array will use to distribute the object clones. I'll also bring the count up to 20. And you can see a thing right now, that's because the empty doesn't move or rotate at all. I'm selecting the empty and let's set the X rotation to 5. Okay. The Y rotation to 30. All right, and you can see that we're getting something. And I'll also change the location here, and again, I'm moving and rotating the empty, and the empty affects the array modifier. I'll set the X, let's set it to 0 0.25 or 27 or something, looking good. I'll set the Y just a slight motion on the Y axis. It adds some nice variation, and again the y-axis is the green axis. And I'll also move the empty on the z-axis, let's say to 0 0.2 or something. Okay, looking good. And you can clearly see the shape now begins to take form. Okay, selecting the torus again, and we're at the object modifiers. And what I'm going to do now is click add modifier, and I'll add a displace. The display is in place and I'm going to click right here and use an existing texture. Okay, I've selected. Move over to the texture options and we have the displays and the text and I'm going to change the type. Let's set it from none to clouds. Now this will be pretty simple. All I do is set the size up to 2 from 0 0.25 and you can see what we're getting. And I'll also change the depth from 2 to 4. Okay. And you can see what we're getting. We're pretty close here. 
moving back to the object modifiers and I'll add a subdivision surface. Let's set this one to be low. And again, I'm adding yet another subdivision surface so I can have even more geometry to use with my second displays. Let's add the second displays, click add modifier and select displays. All right. Now for the second displays, I need the texture as well. Click new for a new texture. And I'll move over to the texture options. We have the first displays here that uses a cloud type texture. And I'm going to switch over to displays.001. This is the second displays and I'm going to change the uh, texture here a bit. I'll set it to hard from soft and I'm going to change the basis. Let's set it to a Voronoi F2. All right. And I'll also bring the size down and I'm bringing the size down because we want the first displays to change the shape of the object while the second displays will add some more detail, some more, some slight detail on the first displays, which is the big one. So I'll change the size, set it from 2 to 0 0.4. Okay. Looking good. Well, not yet, but you'll see. Moving over to the object modifiers. What I'll do is bring the strength for the for both the displays modifiers here down. I'll set the first one to 0 0.5 for the displays and the second displays will use a strength of 0 0.2. Okay. And this is what we're getting. All right. You can also bring the, let's bring the first displays modifier even more down in the strength option. Okay, the strength is set to 0 0.3 for the first displays and the strength is at 0 0.2 for the second displays. And you can see what we're getting. Now let's build the scene. Okay, let's build it. I'm trying to find a nice little angle here and I'm going to hit Control Alt and 0 on my keyboard for, the, for positioning the camera at the place I was looking before. Right mouse button click to select the camera. Let's set some nice round values for the camera. Okay. All right. The rotation, let's set it to 90. The Y rotation to zero and the Z to 220. Okay, and about here. Now we have the camera in place. And we have the object and the empty. Let's change from Blender Render to Cyclos Render. And I'll hit Shift A and add a mesa plane. I'm hitting Tab to change the from object to edit mode and change and change the size of the plane. Let's hit S to scale it up. And I'm changing the scale of the plane. I've said it before in edit mode so that I'm not altering the actual size of the plane. It will still stay at one on X, Y, and Z axis. Now tab again, R, Y, rotate on Y axis. And I'm typing in 90 to rotate on the Y axis for 90 degrees. And now I'll hit Z and X, grab and move it on the X axis for six units. I'm moving this to the left. I'll also delete the lamp. I don't need it. Now select the plane again. I'm hitting zero on my memory keypad for the camera perspective view. And as you can see, this will appear in the camera and this is not what we want. So I'll move over to the object options, scroll down, expand the ray visibility tab, and I'll uncheck camera. And that means that our object here will affect the diffuse, glossy, transmission, scattering, shadow, etc. But it won't appear to the camera. And now I'm free to move to the materials, click new. I will change this material from diffuse BSDF to emission. All right. And I'll bring the strength up. Let's set it up to four or five or something. I'll also move to the world options, click here, 
use nodes and I'm going to bring this one down because I want the main light source for the scene to be the plane. Okay, looking good. Move over to the render options. We have the render samples. Let's bring them down from 100 to 50. And by having this only light source here, this will actually create some, well, actually lots of noise. So you have to bring the samples up in order to get something that will appear to be nice. Okay, we're good. And now let's render an image. Take a look. Okay, looking good. What you can also do is select the toruses and move over to the object modifiers. And I'm going to add a final subdivision surface. And I want to further smoothen the faces of my object. And I'll set this one to be low. I'll send the render down to one and the view is also set to one. Just adding some nice smoothness for the overall scene and selecting the plane, I'll increase slightly the strength. Let's set it up to six. And I'm hitting F12 to render another image. Let's wait a bit. Okay. And what I've also done for this scene I've added a simple material to the object and I've also add some some bump mapping, some uh, displays. So this is it. This is building the scene. You can move uh, from this point on and create your own scenes. I think this object was pretty simple to put together and pretty nice. So this is Dimitris Christou and thanks for watching.